Hello students, today we will learn about nature of classroom communication. The objectives of this lesson are, in this lesson as a part of classroom communication, we will learn about effective verbal and non-verbal communication. Introduction, communication within the classroom is important in order for students to learn effectively and should be put in place from an early stage of learning. The communication is a two-way process wherein the information, ideas, opinions, thoughts, feelings, etc. are transmitted between the individuals through the use of mutually understood symbols and semiotic rules which are signs and symbols. The key communication is the key factor for any classroom transactions. The success rate is high when individual experts in connecting and understanding each other effectively. The type of organizations also decides the type of channel through which the communication passes. On the basis of status of individual involved in the communication process and the urgency of message to be sent, the communication channels will, can be categorized as formal and informal communication. According to Cole and Cham, a typical process of classroom communication and communication in general as well includes the following five distinct stages. 1. Formulation of messages. 2. Message encoding. 3. Message transmission. 4. Message decoding and interpretation. 5 feedback and evaluation. Every message sent and received is intended to be understood by the sender and the received and form a clear transaction of information. Classroom communication can't be misunderstood as an informal structure though there is a lot of casual talk exchanged among the group members. Let us understand communication in formal and informal way and how we communicate verbally, non-verbally and written forms used in both these structures. Formal communication. Formal communication is the exchange of official information that flows along the different levels of organizational hierarchies and conforms to the prescribed professional rules, policies, standards, processes and regulations of the organization. The formal communication follows a proper predefined channel of communication and is deliberately controlled. It is governed by the chain of command and complies with all the organizational conventional rules. In the organizational setup, the formal communication can observe any of the following forms. Few formal communications are downward communication, upward communication, horizontal and lateral communication, diagonal or crosswise communication. Informal communication. The informal communication is the casual and unofficial form of communication wherein the information is exchanged spontaneously between two or more persons without confirming the prescribed official rules, processes, system, formalities and chain of command. The informal communication are based on the personal or informal relations such as friends, peers, family, club members, etc. and thus is free from the organizational conventional rules and other formalities. In the business context, the informal communication is called as a grapevine and it is difficult to define the beginning and end of the communication. The informal communication is characterized by an indefinite channel of communication which means there is no definite chain of command through which the information flows. Hence, the information can flow from anywhere. Often, such communication arises out of the social relations that an individual creates with other persons on the basis of common interest, likings or dislikings. 
there are four types of informal communication. Grapevine network that shows how the communication is facilitated. These are single strand chain, gossip chain, probability chain, cluster chain. The gossips among teachers or students in the classroom is the best example of informal communication wherein the employees of different department irrespective of their hierarchical positions come together and communicate with each other. The grapevine satisfies the social needs of people and smoothens the formal relations by filling in the gaps and even bringing together different people who do not fall under the common chain of command. Further, there are several forms of communication that the individuals use to give some pattern of expression to their messages such that it is easily understood by all. The most common types of classroom communication exist in three categories, verbal, non-verbal, and written. Verbal communication. Verbal communication refers to sending or receiving a message through sounds and languages. Teachers can address to one student or the whole class through verbal communication. It is a type of oral communication wherein the message is transmitted through the spoken words. Here, the sender gives words to his or her feelings, thoughts, ideas and opinions and express them in the form of discussions, presentations and conversations. For example, a teacher may ask a student to stand up which is verbal communication. She may say you can leave and then and can ask students if he or she is participating in any cultural activities. The effectiveness of the verbal communication depends on the tone of the speaker clarity of speech, volume, speed, body language and the quality of words used in the conversation. In the case of verbal communication, the feedback is immediate since there are simultaneous transmissions and receipt of the message by the sender and receiver respectively. The sender must keep his or her speech tone high and clearly audible to all and must design the subject matter keeping the target audience in mind. The sender should always cross check with the receiver to ensure that the message is understood in absolutely the same way as it was intended. Such communication is more prone to errors as sometimes the words are not sufficient to express the feelings and emotions of a person. The success of verbal communication depends not only on the speaker's or speaking ability of an individual but also on the listening skills. How effectively an individual listens to the subject matter decides the effectiveness of communication. The verbal communication is applicable in both the formal and informal kind of situations. Effective verbal communication. More or major strategies of effective procedural and control talk where verbal communication plays an important role and help the teachers and students a great clarity in understanding the content. Content talk by teachers is using advanced organizers relating new material to prior knowledge, elaborating and extending new information and organizing new information which helps teachers statements, ideas and give a conscience overview of new material. Explicit connections of new ideas to students, existing knowledge, explanations of new ideas in full complete terms provide and following a clear structure when explaining new material. Content talk by students is known as inquiry learning and cooperative learning which helps students pursue problems to formulate for themselves and work in small groups to solve a common problem or task. Utilize an ambiguous verbal cue is off-task behavior continues such as I hear talking 
or I do not see everyone at their desks. Making a general statement lets the students know that you are aware that they are off task and wish for them to stop without embarrassing them in front of the whole class. Written communication is sending or receiving information through writing which is a script having a meaning inclined in it. For example, a teacher may arrange a written assignment for students to test their knowledge or present lecture slides or notes for complicated information. It refers to the process of conveying a message through the written symbols. In other words, any message exchanged between two or more persons that make use of written words is called as written communication. The written communication is most common and effective mode of business communication used in formal settings. In any organization, the electronic mails, memos, reports, records, documents, letters, journals, role descriptions, employee manuals, etc. are some of the commonly used form of written communication. For example, a teacher might have a difficult term to be written on the board to ensure the student might not mistaken the oral word with its pronunciation. Report writings or record writing, feedback forms, comments, suggestions, recommendation letters, etc. all take a step forward in communicating clearly what they want to express in a formal way. Few students might not express their views to their teachers due to fear or other constraints. In such cases, a student might express their feelings in silence in a written form. Depending on the personality type, few students might use written form in very formal manner while following clear procedures. Such communication used when the information to be transmitted is lengthy and includes some complex terms that cannot be explained verbally. Also, the organizations maintain their documents in writing such that these can be used as a reference and evidence of any transaction any time in the future. Thus, it is essential for every teacher to develop effective writing skills and inculcate this in all its students. Non-verbal communication. Non-verbal communication refers to communicating without words through body language. Body language is important to the way students read you, gestures, facial expressions, the tone and pitch of the voice and posture. For example, if a teacher is nodding their head while a student is speaking, this can be encouraging or show that they agree with the student. Frequently crossing your arms can put students on the defensive and make it look as if you are closing yourself off to communication. If you do not know what to do with your hands, try pressing your fingers against each other in front of your chest. Students are more likely to be receptive to your ideas if you have body language that is open to them. You also can utilize hand gestures to make a point. We all know what a finger to close lips means or wagging fingers. Para language. Paralanguage is a form of non-verbal communication that allows people to add layers of meanings to their spoken utterance through manipulation of the manner of speech or the way they say things. Paralanguage refers to the conveyance of meaning through non-lexical tokens or words such as uh, mm or well such as qualities of prosody or the rhythm, stress and sound of speech, various aspects of linguistic communication are conveyed through different components of language like words, lexemes, 
grammatical structure, morphosyntactics and sounds, phonology. These components however do not fully encapsulate the depth or non of human communication. Because the way we say things greatly influences how others interpret us. Paralanguage therefore is the term used to discuss these other vocal elements of communication that factor into a speech and interpretation. In other words, paralanguage refers to how something is said rather than focusing on what is said. Effective non-verbal communication. In spite of their importance, words are not the only way that teachers and students communicate. Gestures in behavior convey information as well often supporting a teacher's words but sometimes also contradict them. Students and teachers express themselves non-verbally in all conversations. So freely and automatically in fact that this form of communication can easily be overlooked. Eye contact. One important non-verbal behavior is eye contact while it is the extent and time of when a speaker looks directly at the eyes of the listener. In conversation between friends of equal status, for example, most native speakers of English tend to look directly at the speaker when listening, but to avoid their gaze when speaking. Re-engaging eye contact, in fact, often signals that a speaker is about to finish a turn and is inviting a response from the listener. But conversations follow different rules if they involve someone of greater authority talking with someone of lesser authority. Such as between a teacher and a student in that case, the person in authority signals greater status by gazing directly at the listener almost continuously, whether listening or speaking. This alternate pattern can sometimes prove awkward if either party is not expecting it for example or for students unused to continuous eye contact it can feel like the teacher is staring excessively intrusively or inappropriately an ironic effect can be for the student to feel more self-conscious rather than more engaged as intended for similar reasons, inexperienced or first-time teachers can also feel uncomfortable with gazing at students continuously. Nevertheless, research about the effects of eye contact suggests that it may help anyone whether a student or a teacher to remember what they are seeing or hearing. Communication problems results less from eye contact as such than from differences in expectations of eye contact. If students expectations differ very much from the teachers, one party may misinterpret the other party's motivations. Among some non-white ethnic groups, for example, eye contact follows and patterns that reverse the conventional white English language pattern, they tend to look more intently at the partner when talking and avert gazing when listening. The alternative pattern works perfectly when as long as both parties expect it and use it. Wait time. Another important nonverbal behavior is wait time, which is the pause between conversational turns. Wait time marks when a conversational turn begins or ends. If a teacher asks a question, for example, the wait time both allows and prompts students to formulate an appropriate response. Studies on classroom interaction generally shows that wait time in most classes are remarkably short, less than one second. Unfortunately, wait times this short can actually interfere with the most students thinking. In one second, most students either cannot decide what to say or can only recall a simple automatic fact. Increasing wait time to several seconds has several desirable effects. Students give longer 
more elaborative responses, they express more complex ideas and wider range of students participate in discussion. For many teachers, however, learner to increase wait time, this much takes con conscious efforts and may feel uncomfortable at first time. A trick if you are trying to wait longer is to count silently to 5 before calling on anyone. After a few weeks of practice, discomfort with longer wait times usually subsides and the academic benefits of waiting become more evident. Even though longer wait times are often preferable, they do not always work well with certain individuals or groups. For teachers, the most widely useful advice is to match wait time to the students. Preferences are as closely as possible, regardless of whether these are slower or faster than what the teacher normally prefers. To the extent that a teacher and students can match each other's pace, they will communicate more comfortably and fully and a larger proportion of students will participate in discussions and activities. As with eye contact, observing students' preferred wait time is easier in situations that give students some degree of freedom about when and how to participate such an open-ended discussions or for or informal conversations throughout the day. Social distance. When two people interact, the physical space or distance between them, their social distance often indicates something about how intimate or personal their relationship is. Social distance also affects how people describe others and their actions. Someone who habitual is more distant physically is apt to be described in more general abstract terms than someone who often approaches more closely. Just as with eye contact and wait time, however, individuals differ in the distance they prefer for these different types or different levels of intimacy. And complications happen if two people expect different distances for the same kind of relationship. A student who prefers a shorter social distance than her partner can seem pushy or overly familiar to the partner. The latter in turn can seem aloof or unfriendly, literally distant. The sources of these effects are easy to be overlooked since by definition the partners never discuss social distance verbally, but they are real. The best remedy again is for teachers to observe students naturally occurring preferences as closely as possible and to respect them as much as possible. Students who need to be closer should be allowed to be closer at at least within reasonable limits and those who need to be more distant should be allowed to be more distant. Thus communication with classroom is no merely just a casual talk but it becomes very important for any kind of content, procedure and behavioral control transactions with verbal and non-verbal cues. So it was very interesting to know about classroom communication. Let us understand it through the summary once again. The communication is a two-way process wherein the information, ideas, opinions, thoughts, feelings, etc. are transmitted between the individuals through the use of mutually understood symbols and semiotic rules like signs and symbols, the key communication is the key factor for any classroom transactions. A typical process of communication in classroom is for formulating the message, encoding, transmitting, decoding, interpreting and evaluating depending on the feedback. Effective communication is complementary when both verbal oral and written and non-verbal paralingual used both in formal and informal communication. The present virtual learning is more inclined with verbal and non-verbal language where not just the words but the emphasis on gestures, voice, pitch and sound can be determined. Silence is a gesture which is claimed to have greater importance than words.